All right. Hello, I'm Bobby Stegall, and I'm joined today with uh, Benny Hibbler. Benny has been a friend of mine here in Pasadena, and uh, as a, a neighbor, we started talking about uh, scripture uh, when we bumped into each other. And every week we've been meeting and talking about scripture and the Bible. Um, and finally, I guess we kind of decided to, to record an episode <laughs> and share some uh, scripture. And today's uh, topic will be on decisions. And Benny's going to uh, read us some scripture, um, share his testimony. And thank you for watching. We'd love to hear your thoughts and ideas as well. Um, this fellowship has been very, very important to me. And I just want to say thank you, Benny. And I'll let you okay. introduce yourself if you'd like to. Okay. Uh, my name is Benny Hibbler, and uh, I met Bobby a few months ago, and we've had a good time together. And so uh, he asked me for a scripture, and uh, I uh, would like to say that the Lord has brought me through many, many battles. I've served the Lord for about 50 straight years. I'm 73. And he asked me to pray or meditate on a scripture today. And my heart and my mind went to this scripture. It's in uh, Joel, the third chapter, Joel. And... Uh, I'd like to read it and then have Bobby pray. I'll read it, sort it off. Wow. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Joel 3.16. Would you pray, please? Absolutely. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this uh, beautiful day. Lord, thank you for bringing Benny and I together. Please uh, guide us in our lives and help us uh, help others. Um, and according to your will, Lord, uh, help us see the journey in front of us that you have prepared for us. Help in our decisions. Um, Holy Spirit, we ask you that you fill our mind, our body, and our soul and encompass, encompass us um, throughout each day. We are your servants, Lord, and thank you so, many, so much for all the many blessings you've given us. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. And so we can kind of just have like a, a conversation yes. and just let the, the camera... Right. M don't even pay attention to it. So yes. we'll do that. Okay. Okay? So uh, that was, you said Joel? Yes. 3 and 16. Okay. You might... Read it yourself. Yeah, I, I'm one of the people. I can listen to it, but it's easier to read it. Okay. All right. Good. Three, and you said 16? Yes. Okay. Do you want to continue? Uh, Reading that, or do you want uh, to share what you see? Just one scripture right now. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, what does that mean mean to you? The scripture that you read. Uh, <clears throat> he was stating multitudes and multitudes in the valley of decision, and I think that fits the church, the world, our families, everything. I think it's wrapped up in decision making and God inspired. Many people are in the valley of decision, no matter what walk of life they're in, that's them. And I think that's so important for people to understand the decisions you make not only decides for you, but your children, your husband, your wife, and we know God is the ultimate 
in making our decisions. But I'd like you to see, it's kind of ironic, it says multitudes, multitudes in the valley. Yeah, why the valley, not the mountain? Yeah, that's what I thought too. And uh, I went over to another place in the Word of God. It says, though I walk, Psalms 23 and 4, yea, though I walk, through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So the, I'm sorry, go ahead. What were we going to say? I, I was just going to say, it seems like humanity always could be in a valley when they get disappointment, family problems, church problems. Flat tires. (laughs) Flat tires. (laughs) uh, Employment. It seems like we have decisions every day. And I know for the past 50 years straight, I've had many decisions, some good, some bad. But you learn by what you go through in life. Right. I had a. Oh, it's real fast. You don't have to talk uh, too loud. The mic, the mic will pick you up. Okay. Yeah, just like we're having a conversation, and it'll it'll pick it up. Okay. And uh, I know I had to make it. To, I'm getting ahead of myself, but uh, I want to say this. Three years ago, I was at a convention and I felt bad the whole time up there in Indianapolis. Uh, I just turned 70, I'm 73 now. And uh, as I was in the congregation at the church convention, I felt weak, and I felt very uh, faint. And uh, as I was standing worshiping God, I began to stagger. And people behind me knew something drastically was wrong. I was in Indianapolis, Indiana. My wife was not able to go. I had a a minister friend with me. And as we were walking back to the hotel room, he said, why are you walking so funny? I said, I don't know. I, I just feel real bad. So, I went on and walked to the hotel room. I didn't feel no better. So... Were you just dizzy the whole time as you were walking? Uh, weak. Weak? Yes. And I'd been sick at my stomach. I'd call my wife and told her I was sick at my stomach. Uh, whether that had anything to do with me, I don't know, but I do know I could not walk. Mm. By 2 o'clock a.m. or 3, they called the ambulance. The ambulance came, and they picked me up with an ambulance hurriedly and took me to the hospital that's about less than a mile from where the hotel was in Indianapolis. And that was our general conference. It was the last night and I crawled to the restroom from my bed. I could not walk. My speech was slurred, 
So they said, we're taking you on to the hospital. So as I went to the hospital, uh, they ran all tests on my life, my brain, everything. So the neurologist said, well, I got some good news and I got some bad news. He said, what do you want to hear first? I said, tell me the bad. I love to end up on good. Yeah, right. So he said, the bad news is you had a stroke. Mm. The good news is you had a light stroke. What that? What? How does that translate? <laughs> yes, I couldn't move my hand. The first thing he asked me, he said, "Do this." I said, "I can't." I couldn't stand up. My right leg was paralyzed. I thing. said, "If this is light, God yeah. help people that have a horrible stroke." So they put me in the hospital. And um, one of the chief things that happened, my blood pressure went higher, higher, probably right in the back of an ambulance, being human like we all are, many miles from home. And uh, so I thought a while, and they said, we're putting you in intensive care. So while my blood pressure was high, the nurses, I could hear them talking. Uh, they said, you realize that man's blood pressure is so-and-so? And she said, yeah, I know it, that's something else. So the doctor took it on himself. He said, I want to tell you nurses something. Very humble man. He didn't, wasn't a know-it-all. He just said, I want to explain something to you. He said, his blood pressure's high. If I bring it down too quick, he will have another stroke. Wow. It has to be done gradually. I don't care how high it is, as long as it keeps going down. So the nurses didn't say too much after that. Right. <laughs> I didn't have to worry about a high blood pressure, but I had it. And I stayed in intensive care about seven days. And they tried to help me. They said uh, I couldn't swallow. And so I had to go take swallowing tests. I couldn't talk good. Uh, they put things around my throat and vibrated to get my muscles oh, wow. tightened where I could talk again. And it was not for sissies. <laughs> I tell you. How to be scary just in yeah, day to day it, waking up. I... And one man came in and they kept calling him doctor. And he was a specialist in strokes. Hmm. And he was worse off than me. So I was thankful. I began to um, wonder what was going to happen. All my Christian friends were praying all the conference people began to pray and ask God to help help me. And I was so glad, but I just sat there in the intensive care. And uh, one of the biggest things, I couldn't swallow. And uh, the lady head of that came to me one day about the third day, and she said, Benny, what in the world's wrong with you? I said, well, 
You told me I couldn't swallow or eat anymore, and that's about all I do is eat. <laughs> so she said, no, Benny, I didn't say that. I said, for right now, a few days, you got to get the muscles you start working at it. strong right. in your body. And I said, okay. So she took me back down to the uh, swallowing test. And she said, whoever she was, I don't know how high she was, but she said, would y'all move over? I want to give the test. Oh, wow. So Cleared the way for you. Yes. She gave me the test, and she said, Benny, now you're going to swallow this, and this screen's going to light up and show how your swallowing's doing, if it's being held or going down or what. So to make a long story short, she said, uh, everything is okay. Go eat. And so the nurses got me a lunch and I think I probably had chicken <laughs> but I've had to work on that even after three years sometimes I can eat nuts or salad or something and it's still kind of uh, difficult the, yes it's difficult I start coughing but I want to thank the Lord for what he did I said, Lord, you have your chance to take me at 70. You're the boss. You can do it all. And uh, I would appreciate it uh, if I have more time or you through with me. And uh, every preacher that came in to pray for me, they ended it. Benny, God ain't through with you yet. I, I well, took, I needed you, that's for sure. Well, I took it that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Some people have a stroke and get healed immediately. I didn't. I knew it'd be a process. This is after many days of therapy, walking, swallowing, uh, putting on my throat things to vibrate, making these uh, muscles strong. Would you say that you had uh, multitudes of decisions? Yes, I had multitude of Every decisions. Day. I had to make up my mind to do therapy, walk, and do what they said do. Every day? Yes, because if you don't, they said you won't ever get to where you would be today. And so I went through the speech. I could not stand on two feet. My right leg was paralyzed. If they put me up next to a table, I was like a noodle. I just collapsed. No structure at all in my right leg. And today, as I walked from my house to your house, I thought three years ago, will I ever walk again? And God is helping me to walk, to do things. It wasn't the power of just man in therapy. God smiled on me. I give him all the glory and he used people to help me. And I thank you, the Lord, for that. And so, decisions are what we all have to make. It says in Joel, many are in the valley, but why can't we be on the mountaintop, like what, you said, right, while ago? Why not the ocean? Or, yes. Or, you know. Why does it have to be in the valley? Because most of the time, when you're flat on your back with a stroke, <laughs> it's hard to get on a mountain. <laughs> but I, 
by the help of God, I did. I'm on that mountain now. I'm thanking God for it. But he said in Psalms, Yea, thou walk through what? The valley, the valley, of, yeah, the valley. of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Hmm. And you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. For some reason, I um, I read the you know multitudes multitudes in the valley of decision. I read that as uh, many many decisions. I don't know why. I guess the multitudes uh, threw me off. But I see uh, what you're saying now, which I guess is why we do Bible study together. Um, that so, was one of many decisions I've had to make. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, daily, monthly, yearly. But for your family, for you, your employment, what to say to people uh, at the right time, timing means all. And so I think God has us to work with, which sometimes is good and sometimes is bad. But he loves us, thank God. Unconditionally. Yes, unconditionally. I remember um, how you know we met. I saw that you were uh, trying to get your your vehicle to work, and I was you know just moved here to Pasadena, and I and I drove by, and I had a decision to make. You know, should I stop and you know help him, or should I? I mean, I just moved in. I had a lot, you know, to do, but something in my heart um, told me uh, to make the decision to stop. And I'll always remember uh, how grateful you were. And I said, well. Um, I'm happy to do it, but pretty sure I'm pretty sure there may be one day that I need your help. Yeah, and uh, and I appreciate. I'm thankful for making that decision. You know, while I was um, nearby, I think that the multitudes and multitudes in the valley also lets us know that we're not alone. Right? There's there's a lot of us in the valley. Yes, and it's it's great to to work together um, and help reach those decisions. Yeah, that decision was listen to your wife at times and don't make all the decisions. <laughs> uh, you only have one decision. Yeah. Let her decide. <laughs> I bought a car with the knob of 2020 Escape. And uh, she, I bought it for my wife. And she said, Benny, I don't want the shift like that. Get me another car. I said, well... If you don't want it, I'll take it. So I'll sell my truck and we'll buy you. What do you want? I want a 2019, the kind that has a stick. The stick shift. And so I don't have to do that. So I said, Nita, nothing's going to happen like that. So, yeah, yeah, it couldn't be anything wrong with a knob. It's it's fine. (laughs) So, lo and behold, I spilt some coffee (laughs) on my knob. And uh, I knew it was going to be expensive because Bobby knew I put my little thing in drive and it wouldn't go. It wouldn't go. I I couldn't even figure it out. He couldn't figure it out. So I called Ford Motor Company. I said, hey, I'm under warranty. I only got about 11,000 miles. And uh, the little round thing that says park reverse neutral, drive, everything else, uh, it won't go into gear. So uh, what can I do? They said, well, let me look at this up. This is the complaint department of Ford, (laughs) way up north. So they said, well, Mr. Hitler, you know, we can't pay for coffee or anything. They took off the knob and saw coffee and stuff. And I'm sorry, we cannot cover it. I said, how much is it? They said about $600. I said, well, okay. So I fought it for a while. I finally gave up. So I learned lesson number one, it's good to listen to your wife at times. <laughs> she, she saw that coming. Almost. Yeah. So 
that's a decision I made. wasn't a good decision, I guess, but it's okay <laughs> now. And yeah, thank okay you now. for helping me that day. I Absolutely. Got all the information for me. He said he'd call and do it. I said, well, thank you very much, Bobby. Yeah, it was, it was great meeting you. Yes. So I think the decisions we make today are going to affect our family. They're going to affect every part of your life and my life. I'm still making decisions based on I do by the Word of God. And a wise man has said, Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Psalms one, blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So when I get counsel, as I do, I would say you need godly counsel to make sure you're in the book. Because we always said, you ask somebody about children, they have no children, <laughs> and they're going to tell you everything about it. <laughs> yeah, be like me telling someone how to yeah, raise their kids. Yeah. Yes. So there's, I base all of my life, I try to, on the Word of God. I put Him first, and that's not easy all the time. It's easy to say, I put God first. But you evaluate it, and you see if you are putting God first. Well, it's a actions, right? Actions speak louder than words. And, of course, those start with your thoughts right. and, and your, um, your decisions. But taking right. action, I think, is, is what has led um, to me growing spiritually closer uh, to God significantly over the past year, year and a half. It's... Um, making the time right. to dedicate to God. Yes. Uh, I, I wish it was every single day. I wish I could say that. Uh, but it's nearly every single day. And um, because I've changed that decision to do it uh, daily and not just say I'm a Christian, but to consciously act Christian and make that decision, um, I've been introduced to godly counsel throughout every aspect of my life when in the past I, I didn't have so much of that. And so it's almost as if God is gifting me with, with, um, with others who will help and assist me uh, throughout the way. Right. You, know, you can only help the person who wants help. Right. Absolutely. Uh, it comes to my mind, uh, Jesus said, love me with all your heart all your mind, all your soul, all your spirit. Boy, that's a lot. <laughs> I, I, think, I think it's everything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a wise man told me one time, he said he's praying, and he asked the Lord, he said, why did you say all our heart, all our mind, all our soul, and all our spirit? And it came back to him in prayer. He said, you are out of control. <laughs> he went, uh, okay. Yeah. Not the response, you think yeah. about it. If you love that Lord with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul strength, he's in control. Of each aspect, right? Yes. Yeah. He's driving, not you. Right. He's a better driver, too. Yeah. He's out. a better Uber driver. He's a better Uber driver, right? <laughs> That's pretty funny. You could even say, uh, yeah, there's no fare, right? Yeah, I mean. No cost. Best friend we ever had is Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, do you want to share your uh, testimony this time, or do you want to... 
uh, share it next time, or how do you? Well, uh, I just like to say uh, I I was here in Houston, right by Pasadena, and I had an experience with God when I was about ten to twelve, but it never took really. And I did a lot of things that were wrong as a teenager. And so about 18 years old, uh, so if I'm 73, that'd be a pretty long time ago. A long time, yeah. So uh, at 18, I had to make a decision. I'd already repented and uh, the person that got me to thinking uh, was real different, and it, it isn't no big deal, but uh, I got to thinking about this. Uh, I told her how I like to watch, as they called him, Mohammed Ali, and I love to watch that guy box. I, I tell you, Cassius Clay. And uh, she said one thing, it wouldn't affect most people. She said, yeah, but he's going to be a religious man. He's religious. And uh, that kind of sparked a hunger in me toward the Lord. I had no concept of being anything like him, but it got me to thinking about religious music and things. So I heard a song one day, rock and roll, and uh, he said, Jesus is a soul man, and I'm sure sold on him. And boy, <laughs> in all my rock and roll and Elvis Presley, the Beatles and all that, had a guy say, Jesus is a soul man, and I'm sure sold on him. So. I had, uh, do I have about five minutes? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Okay. Uh, I was 18, and I went to Milby High School here in Houston, and Hartman Junior High and Greg Elementary. And um, <clears throat> very controversial thing happened. Uh, very controversial. So I'm just telling you what happened to me. And uh, I partied, I drank, I done everything. So one night after I'd been repenting, changing my mind about the life I was living, I wasn't an alcoholic, I wasn't that, but I, I drank, I partied, I knew I wasn't serving God, so um, we were at an apartment right here close to Pasadena, Texas on Winkler, and uh, we'd been going to a church, and it seems like the church was splitting. Some people believe in, I, I can't even pronounce it, glossolalia, and some didn't. And so the people I drank with, or did drink, we were in that apartment. And they said, where is Benny? And I'd walked into a bedroom and I said, God, I'd like to know something. I said, if this tongue thing is real, I want it. So I had the doors shut. They were in the other room. Nobody laid hands on me, nothing. I prayed and said, Lord, I want it. Nothing happened. Zero. I tried it again. I said, is this so dumb? I said, this tongue thing, I want it, Lord. 
nothing happened. Not one thing. I said, well, I guess it's not true, but I'm going to pray one more time. I didn't have any experience. Nobody coached me. Nobody did nothing. I didn't even say hallelujah. I began to say, Lord, my all is given to you. And when I said that, one of the most powerful things I've ever experienced in my life came and touched my head and came out my body. I never in my life, there was no beer, nothing in life could touch that. No service in anywhere I've ever been. I was at a denominal church. Some believed in it, some didn't. I didn't know what to do. I had to make a decision. Is this truth? No one laid <coughs> hands on me. <clears throat> Just water? Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> as I prayed, they thought, my Lord, what's happened to Benny? And so uh, I began to pray for the girl. I didn't know what to do. I thought it's like a, a power I'd never had. <clears throat> and I began to speak in a heavenly language. And many people in 1967 received what's called the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I wish I could, thank you, yes, sir. I wish I could say that I did follow up. I became in the valley after that, probably a couple years later, and I totally went back into the world. I began to uh, not live what I knew I had. And so one day I was on a hunting trip in Burnett, Texas. And as I sat on that hunting stand, it kept rolling through my mind where would you spend eternity if you died now? Where? Man, it shook me up. So I went to the house. My mother and dad lived in Burnett. They had moved from Houston. My daddy took a post office job in Buckhannon Dam, Texas. So, or King Clan, later Buchanan. And uh, that morning, probably about 9.30, I told them I was going to church. And uh, the pastor, after the service, said, my message changed about 9.30 this morning. And the only thing I really remember was he said, I went through World War, or Korean, or World War II War, or may have been Korean. And he said, I was almost home. I could see the house. I thought, well, what about it? He said, I lost control of my car. I fell in a large embankment. He made it, but Barely. he said, I almost missed the whole thing. Mm. So I came to service that night, little country church, no fanfare, no big big wheels and big moguls and come and take no Starbucks your, at the, at the front. No Starbucks. <laughs> and uh, uh, the pastor was not preaching. So he'd already told me his message 
changed. I was almost home. So the man preached. He was old. He was 70-something. That ain't old now. <laughs> yeah, right. And he said, um, he looked at me. He said, uh, uh, I was repenting. He preached on the prodigal son that God still loved you even though you went away. And uh, he looked at me and said, son, I don't know if you know this, but I just feel like you're called to preach. So I prayed and prayed and prayed. That had been on me a lot. I didn't tell him I preached before. So I went to that pastor I said, have you been talking to that man? Have you? He said, I promise you, I haven't said a word. So I got myself in relationship. And before I left that night, uh, some of the people asked me, said, how were you baptized? I said, well, I never thought that much about it. Right. And I said, I guess the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Ghost. And uh, they asked me, they said, they gave me scripture in the Bible, every place in the New Testament that anybody was baptized they all were baptized in the name of Jesus. I went back to Houston. I had a preacher and two boys working there. And they said, you could get baptized today at lunch. What doth hinder thee? Of course, my mind was, what about what Jesus said? Baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They said, what is the name? Jesus. Hmm. Jesus is the Father, Jesus is the Son, and Jesus is the Holy Ghost. So I thought, wow. So I got baptized, and I want to tell you what. There's been some rough decisions, but I can truthfully tell you fellowship with God. I was not raised that way. No way. I said, I was raised to believe this, but God had to crack my head and my strong will, and he's still doing it. You think you're strong will? I'm strong will. <laughs> but I have to turn it over to God. I have to say, through the Spirit, we mortify the deeds of the flesh. You don't get up in the morning and say, I'm not going to cuss, I'm not going to drink, I'm not going to shoot dope, I'm not going to do nothing. Forget that. you got to have a Savior that says, through me, you can do all things. Are you saying you're Mr. Holy Man? No. <laughs> I struggle morning and probably. Yeah. <laughs> so I just want to let you know, you got to be open and he will teach you and what really got my attention he handed me a track a little thing said 500 that was a lot of money then <laughs> he said 500 dollar reward for anybody in the new testament that was not baptized in jesus name i said you know if they get that kind of money they must be pretty sure <laughs> and uh, I said, that's pretty convincing. And what people don't know, the book of Acts is the birthday of the church. They said, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter, the one that denied him, like me and you have Absolutely. all our life, right. he thought he was an outcast. What Peter say? Well, he said, they asked him, said, Peter, what must we do? He said this, repent, be baptized, every one of you, 
in the name of Jesus for the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And when I saw that, the birthday, you got to go, not to the epistles, but you could go to John 3. He said, uh, you must be born of water and spirit. And many people in the nominal world say, get the scissors out, cut your tongue off. We don't speak in tongues. And so I'm saying it's been um, controversy. No, I think it's only controversy if, um, if you allow it to be. Right, you know? right, absolutely. I mean, you know, being just a, a Christian period could be controversial if, in your, if you're in a Muslim world. You know, if, um, if you're the youngest brother, you could have controversy with everyone else because you know, we're always right. Yes. Um, so I, I understand the difference um, not knowing if the if the tongues or, or how you worship God is is the right way, but I, if you feel Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit and God in your life, what can be wrong? Right. He said He'd lead us and guide us into all what truth. Right. Yeah, the truth. Yeah. When I asked for the Holy Ghost, I said, "Give me that tongue to that hidden budge." <laughs> Boy, when I said my all is given to you, he filled me. I've never been in service like that. It was no, that's that's, powerful. that's just you and him. That's you know that's, that's yes. that connection. One on one, and I'm not here, but just to say what happened to my life. And he said the promise is to you, to your children, and as many as the Lord I God shall call. I love it. Well, thank you for sharing that, Benny. Yes. Any, um, any final thoughts on uh, the uh, idea of decisions? Yes. Decisions uh, you're going to have them daily, but the Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask from above of God, and he will liberally give it to you according to his will yes like we talked yes about last time like we talked about yesterday yes That's awesome. all right buddy i thank you so much but i would just say search the scripture and see if truth is truth <laughs> you'll, you'll know it yes you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you or set you free. Absolutely. Amen. And I will admit, a lot of wildfire things have to be done in decency and in order. So that's something to think about. Not all the tongue talking and baptizing is right. I'll admit. Some may want money, some have a motive of something else, but if you're godly and you seek an answer, he'll give it to you. We all have different gifts, right? Yes, yes. It's how, it's how we use them that, that matters. Uh, yes, that's right. Am I using gifts to get money from you? Somebody say, Benny's a great guy. Man, he helped an old lady across the street. But God may say, you know why I helped her? She's a millionaire. Right. That's why I helped her. Where's she at, by the way? <laughs> yeah, where is she? All right, baby. Well, I sure do appreciate it. Yeah. I, I love you, and I, uh, I thank you for your time, and thanks for watching, uh, everybody, and listening. And let us know what you think. And maybe we'll uh, have time to do one more before okay. I head out of here. Okay. All right. Great.